this message is just for you. You are good enough. This is the episode for you. If you struggle with perfectionism and pile on the pressure for your language learning, today's message is just for you. Now, I know that a lot of us around here really care about everything. And I know that I'm not just speaking for myself here when I say a lot of us have taken the idea of doing our best or giving 100% or going the extra mile and really run with it. And this sense of caring can show up in so many ways. It's not just perfectionism, although it can definitely look like that. It's the way we tense our jaw and our stomach when we study. It's the intensity with which we grip our pens and engrave our writing onto the paper so you can see it 10 pages down because everything we write just matters so much. It's about how much importance we place on each individual task. And I'd love to say that caring more means that everything we do is bursting with sunbeams, but putting too much emotional weight behind everything, for a lot of us, actually does the opposite. And the person who really helped me to understand this was Clark Kegley, who is an American coach and YouTuber. I'll put his video in the notes underneath. And when I watched a video of his, it just all made sense in my head. You know, it was one of those eureka moments for me where heavenly music plays and you can literally just feel something click into place. He said, Think about the way you kind of fiddle with your phone in your hands, mindlessly pass it from one hand to the other as you sit on the sofa. He said, you don't really think about it. If you drop it, it will only fall onto your lap, so you pick it up, you start again. And you can do that idly for hours, passing it from one hand to the other and barely even notice you're doing it. But if you take the same phone, the same tossing it from one hand to the other, but you're leaning over a balcony or the railings of a bridge, it's a whole different experience. Your anxiety levels shoot right up. All of a sudden, it's really, really important that you don't drop that phone. Before, we weren't even thinking about it, but now our heads are full of all these what ifs. If we drop it, it's gonna break. It'll be such a waste. You'll have to replace it. It'll cost a fortune. How long will it take to save up for a new one? And that simple action that you did without really thinking about it on the sofa before, well, it now suddenly becomes hard, tiring, draining, stressful. And the same thing is going on with our language learning. We don't just want to do a thing, we want it to be amazing. So it's perhaps not the greatest mystery in the world that language learners are asking, why is speaking so stressful? And I'm using speaking here as an example just because I think for most of us, it's the most pronounced, but actually this goes for all aspects of our language learning. Or they're asking, why can I talk fine to myself just around the house, but I freeze up as soon as I try to have a conversation with another person? Or they're asking, why can I talk so much better when I've had a few beers? But it's not just the speaking itself that's stressful, it's all the what ifs that they're piling up behind it. What's happening every time you speak is that so much of the time you're worrying about what the other person might think or if you're going to make a mistake or whether your accent is really annoying. And whenever you do that, you're taking what was a relatively light load, that's you just chatting to yourself or to your dog around the house, and chucking a whole load of extra stones on it. You know, am I gonna say something embarrassing or inappropriate? And that's more stones. Are you talking too much? Is that an awkward silence? More stones. 
So how do we take those stones off? I've got three tips for you. Number one, find people who are on an equal footing to you to talk to, to study with. Because yes, it's great to have people who you can learn from and who you can aspire to, but I find that having people around you who are learning the same language as you, or people who are learning your native language, but on the same level as where you're at with your new one, can really help. Partly because it's easier to feel comfortable making mistakes when the other person is on the same level, because they're making mistakes too but also because it lets you see how much communication gets done with dodgy grammar and lots of hand gestures. To see what a difference you can make to another person, even in a language that's not your own. And you can grow together. Number two, make it a habit to recognise and then celebrate what you did well, every single time whether that's for speaking, reading, writing, grammar practice, whatever it is, good things get praise. And if you're talking to other learners, make sure to recognise what they're doing too and point it out. Tell them that they're doing an amazing job. And number three, have some times where you use your language just for fun. Create things that nobody else is ever going to see. Spend time just looking at things because they're fun or interesting, but with no goal in mind. Create opportunities where you're just spending time with your languages and letting them make you happy. Because letting go of the emotional weight doesn't mean you stop caring and it doesn't mean that you'll stop trying to improve. It really doesn't mean you'll become slapdash or lazy overnight. It just means that you get used to not carrying the extra stones. Have a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you back here on Monday.